410 of 2019. There's the output. That's 900 volts, close to 1,000. I can run this down. Eight volts. Yeah, I've checked this already. It's fairly accurate. So it'll run as low as seven volts, but these, uh, that's like a ten thousandths gap. I've added a larger cage onto this. Works good. What's unusual, I get nothing here. If I go inside, it starts picking it up. I go right past the top of this. It starts picking it up. So it's but anyway, yeah, for the most part, it works great. I'm up to 213 millihenries on the inductors. That's them inside. This is the uh, xenon ball, the 110. Flashing around 10, 10 pulses per second. It's about half lit, I would say. Or floating, yeah. It's over, it's around 900 volts now. Close to a thousand. 11.7. So that's what you're dealing with. Uh, this is coming right off the inductors bulb is just hanging there but the one's the ground the other one's going the uh, coming off the spark gap through the inductors into the bulb I'm trying to knock out the high end the high frequency getting more trying to get more usable voltage I was going to put in a or design a buck converter for this buy one I needed to know how much output I would need for an input into a buck converter. Well, this just answered that question. This goes down as it warms up. Yeah, it's pushing like a thousand volts. 900,000. So that's why you got to be careful. Things aren't always what they seem for a 110 volt bulb. The inductors did help. I was able to knock out a lot at the higher end without losing much. The inductors don't seem to heat up. So I was able to get the 12 volt bulb kind of bright. It's still not enough though. I, ha I have to get go to too many too high of pulses. I mean a 110 volt bulb. Come on. This the bulb 12 volt bulb when it's lit it appears as a 6 volt or draws 6 volts 0.3 amps when it's lit with a DC. So I can assume that's what would be flying through it I would need to get it to that brightness. About 800 volts on this line. 10 thousandths gap is a congruent. It's about 800 volts. It 
There's my Faraday shield. Yokes. I got the shield grounded to the water pipes along with these, this ground down here. That's still a separate ground. Yeah, I would recommend a uh, spark gap in there across your caps. This here was the output I measured. Here's the diodes, here's the cap bank. I put a 10 ohm resistor across it. It was measuring 106 millivolts. AC at 17 kilohertz. Uh, 70 millivolts DC. It was it measured. Yeah, don't use 5K microwave diodes. They're too lossy. There's too much resistance in there. You'll lose way too much. I used the smallest diode I could without trying without blowing them. Power for this bleed resistor. It's a 2.2 meg. Let's see what else is there? Anything else? That's the 68 ohm. There's a, I'm, I'm running the inductors through the xenon bulb right now doesn't seem to hurt anything but it's at high frequency I have to store and convert back into a lower voltage is what I'm trying to do so that's uh that's what we've got right now. Yeah, it's a 900, between 900 and 1,000. Yeah, that's all being converted. To, well, a lot of it's being converted to current. Going into that bulb. I'm not trying to light a bulb. So I need an alternative a battery bank. You can't charge a battery with 800 volts. At uh, well, let's see, yeah, 800 volts coming out of there. Going through this frequency is probably around uh, 17 kilohertz. It's 24 coming out of, coming out of the globe. Somewhere along the line is converting down to 17. So yeah, high frequency, high voltage, going into a resistive load. Yeah, it's flashing uh, about 10, about 10, 10 pulses per second. It's about half lit. So that's what we've got.